If you've been following along with the other tutorials, I've showed you how to get started modding spell masons, how to mod pickup objects, how to mod units, and now I'm going to show you how to mod your own spells. So here we're going to create a spell called Undead Blade, which is like a uh, slice, except it's going to do damage only to resurrected units and summons, and it's going to do more damage than usual. So um, I modified the existing icon. All spell icons have a border that matches the kind of damage that they do. And so you can see that the card category is a uh, damage spell. And this is important because it defines which one of these categories the spell is going to show up in. So other things that we can define inside the spell is how much it costs, um, if it gets more expensive when you use it rather than just a little bit more expensive. So one means after every turn that passes, it will reduce the mana cost by uh, one use. If it's two, then it takes longer for it to reduce, and that's useful for spells that can't be used every turn, like Resurrect or something like that. Support Quantity is a special flag that means if a card is cast more than once in a row, um, basically combine them and call the effect function only once with the quantity passed into here. Um, so if you want effect to be called once for every single one, even when they're cast sequentially, then you would just set that to false. Um, the probability is set relative to the card's rarity. Um, so you can explore these like other things. We just F12 that, it shows that it's in common types. I go to common types.d.ts and um, here I can see the card rarities. So that'll dictate the border that shows up around the card. So here's Undead Blade, it has that common border. If we look at something uh, crazier like Clone, it's got the forbidden border. So that's what dictates that. Um, and that also dictates the probability that it'll show up in an upgrade. Okay, now the thumbnail, we're using a custom thumbnail. So this is a path to the Spell Mason's mod, Undead Blade. And so here we have that, right here, we have that uh, thumbnail right there. And then um, the uh, sound effects, it's going to play a pre-existing sound effect. The animation path um, is going to be a custom animation. And so I'm going to show you how to create your own animations right now. Basically, inside of the mod folder, I have a bunch of images titled spell undead blade underscore and then the number one, two, three, all the way through nine. And then using texture packer, which I leave a link to right here, I take those images and I drag them into here. And then I do publish sprite sheet and I save it as the name of the mod, .json, and hit save. And what this is going to do is it's going to generate both the PNG of the sprite sheet, which is all of those PNG stacked uh, together, and then the JSON file that I demoed in the pickup tutorial that basically defines the animations. And so we can see we've created a spell undead blade animation. And so in order to use it, we just have to reference everything before the underscore. So the animation path, that plays for this card is spell Undead Blade, and that's how to add your own animations. The same goes for units and pickups and whatnot. You just make sure to include the images in the mod directory, use Texture Packer, create this uh, JSON file for the sprite sheet and the sprite sheet PNG, and then make sure that in the mod you declare the sprite sheet, the path to it, and then it will be available for use. Okay, so now let's get into the effect, because that's where the fun stuff happens. So when the spell is triggered, we have an asynchronous function that gets the effect state of the spell. So if we go into uh, index.d.ts in type slash cards, we can see the effect state. And this is basically state that is passed from uh, spell to spell as it's invoked that carries certain information, such as the IDs of the cards, um, the unit that cast, the player that belongs to the unit that cast, the caster position when they cast, the targeted units, targeted pickups, the location that the cast was invoked on, and various other things. So that's what the state is. The card is the instance of the card that was invoked. The quantity, as I mentioned earlier, is if you have more than one in a row, the underworld, as I explained in a previous tutorial, is the game state. And the prediction, as I explained in a previous tutorial, is very important. This determines whether or not the spell is being invoked in prediction mode or if it's actually affecting the game state. So now let's get into the meat of it. So 
when undead blade is triggered, we use the effect state dot targeted units. Now this is how we hook into things like target circle and target cone. So um, for example, if I do target circle and I am in the circle and the archer's in the circle, that means that both of these units are going to be affected. And I just have huge health right now, so it's not, it's not obvious. Let me just set my health lower. So as you can see, both of these units are gonna be affected. That's because they're in state.targeted units. So this is what you wanna use when you're targeting units with a spell. You wanna use state.targeted pickups. When you're affecting pickups in a spell, like push, for example, affects both pickups and units. Um, so then we filter on units that are alive because it doesn't make any sense to attack dead units. And then uh, this is key. Units already have a property called original life, which is set to true if they're not resurrected and if they're not summoned. So uh, this is what's special about this one. It's only filtering units that are not an original life. So then we loop through the quantity because we want to do this for once for every then we loop through the quantity because we want to do this once for every card that's in a row because with Slash and with Undead Blade, they speed up and go bam, 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 bam when they're attacked. And that's how we're doing this. We're making it support quantity and then we're doing something with the quantity here. If support quantity was false, it would just slash one at a time like slash, slash, slash like that and wouldn't be super cool. So as I showed in the other tutorial, um, if it's not the prediction and it's not running on the server, then we can do things like animate and sound effects. So I'm just using a built-in set timeout um, with a delay and I'm playing the sound effect. I'm looping through each of the targets in the targets array up here. I'm uh, creating the animated image so I can use this built-in one-off image which comes from card utils. Um, and I'm passing in the coordinates that I want it to play. In this case, it's the unit. The image path is the animation path that we defined earlier, spell undead blade. And then the parent is the layer that we want to play it in. Um, if you have any questions about this, feel free to ask me in the hashtag mods channel on Discord. If you're interested in just exploring for yourself, you can. You can go into the pixieutils.d.ts and you can see all the containers. Um, these are basically sprite containers and it helps with layering visuals. So the liquid is below the board, which contains all of the like uh, floor tiles and then the blood smears on top of that. And then there's the container for the units and then the spells play over top of that and so on. There's a lot to explore here and I'm not gonna go into all of it right now, but it's all available in the type files if you're curious. Then um, there's always the chance that one off image will return undefined if there's a problem, like if the animation path doesn't correspond to an animation. So we have to wrap this in an if statement. And then this is all just for effects. So we're gonna randomize the rotation of the sprite we're gonna flip every other slash animation so it comes in from the other side. And then um, after 100 milliseconds timeout so that the animation plays for a little bit, we're gonna have the unit take damage. Now, uh, and, and then changing delay between animations is what makes it speed up and be really cool. So this is all happening only in the one context on the client in a non-prediction context because we don't wanna play any animations in a prediction context. So in the others, and this is a very important, um, the units are just going to take damage immediately. It's very critical that these match because if these don't match, what will happen is the behavior or the final result will be different on the server and different in the prediction than it is when it actually plays out on the uh, player's machines. So then after we loop through the quantity, we check if the target's length is equal to zero. And then if it is, we refund the spell. So basically if you accidentally cast it on the wrong thing, we don't want to take mana because that's just a bad user experience. It's not fun. So we're going to refund the spell in that case. And then, um, once again, after all that happens, if we're on the client, it's not a prediction and it's not in the server, we're going to await uh, all of the animations. And this is really important because we don't want it to move on to the next spell before this spell has finished. For example, before all the units have taken damage. If we do something asynchronous, like set timeout, and then we don't await it to be done, because remember this is an asynchronous function, then it'll go ahead and move on to the next effect in the spell chain before playing. So, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and demo this spell. So let's grab Undead Blade, and let's use Target Circle, and then I'm going to uh, create an archer, I'm gonna kill him, and then let's resurrect him, and let's clone him. And now, as you can see, I do target circle and undead blade, and the only ones which are taking damage is the resurrect and the clone. 
Um, that's because of the way that the spell was designed. The original life units are not going to take any damage. And so here's the animation, and boom, it animates like that. Now, remember, if there's more than one, so let's, let me resurrect this guy, and I'm going to do a whole bunch of these. This is the part where it plays the animation. And so that's why I did all that fancy timeout stuff, because it's playing the animation and speeding up and making the sound effect. So that's the entire spell. Um, as usual, we're using a mod object, filling out all the necessary spots, exporting the spell, exporting the sprite sheet. We're including it in the index.ts so that it's available. Here it is right here. And then we're going to run npm run build, and we're going to copy the necessary file into the local game files, which I showed in the setting up mods tutorial, and also the build.js. It's also worth noting that when you create a mod, you need to have this at the top so that you have all the typings and the autocomplete. So that's how to mod spells and spell masons. So I'm hoping that um, you all are inspired and play around and make some spells of your own. Remember, if you want them to be accessible in the multiplayer servers, you can open a PR on GitHub. That way I can review the code and I can even help address some common issues. And if it works well and is a good fit, I'll merge it in and then it'll be available after the next update for everyone to enjoy. Thanks for watching.